Hello everybody, welcome back to Back Out of the Case. This is Skyflight44, aka Zex44, and today we're going to be playing Jack and Dax to the Precursor Legacy. This is going to be my proper playthrough, unlike the last one I actually did of um, the original Jack and Daxter game. And I'm going to be repeating a couple of things that I actually said between the two playthroughs. But, um, this game is, is still one of my, uh, favorites of the original PS2. Not necessarily, like, you know, top 10, but, uh, definitely top 20. It's a collectathon. I love collectathons. Uh, some of the ones that aren't as good, like Vex or, uh, The Blob. Um, even those can touch my heart a little bit. But Jack and Naxter was one of the finest of the sixth generation when it was started to become a dying breed. At least it went out with a bang. The only ones I really know of now, um, were really, uh, just the Super Mario games. And as a collectathon, the Super Mario 3D games are really aren't necessarily all that big on it anymore like they were in the, uh, you know, like Super Mario 64 days, but, uh, oh well. This game is actually quite fun. Very, very fun. And originally was, I'm not going to say a technical marvel, but in some areas it was actually very, very impressive. Oh, look, now I have to go and select a file to save, too. Yeah, I started this a couple of times before. That was a 331. And 331 again. All of it was around 2003. I mean, I mean 2013, I mean. Really, I haven't played this for quite a long time. I've always been playing the original one on my PS2. Oh, well. Out of, basically... I have spent uh, my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose? And why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco. One of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey, uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk! Eek! What is that dark ooze? 
It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right. And then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man. Are you going to keep yapping or are you going to help me out of this mess? I'm going to keep yapping because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark gooey eco stuff, will we? Cause I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there! Before I turn you both into ferns! Okay. This game's a lot of fun. Actually, now I think about it, um, I would probably say this is one of the, uh, after the Spyro games, this is probably the collectathon I actually play the most. Which is really strange, considering the fact that when I originally played this, I didn't necessarily like the game too much. Because of uh, two reasons. One, the controls. You actually have to use the um, analog stick to play the game. That really wouldn't be all that bad. Well, nowadays. It's, you know, it's preferred to actually use it. But in my uh, PS1 days, I never used the analog stick. Because none of the games I actually played required it. And I started out playing games uh, mainly with a, uh, a little bit with the computer. Super Mario World technically is my first actual game, my uh, first like professional game I've ever played. And I played a lot on the Game Boy Color, so I was really big on using the D-pad. Second thing, 
And why I didn't get into this game as much as I should have? Well, I got Ratchet and Clank, or my brother got Ratchet and Clank about 18 days before, well, I got Jack and Daxter beers. My, me and my brother's uh, actual birthdays are not all that far off. It's just that he was born, like, almost two years younger than me. Which is actually kind of funny, because he was... Sub the uh, doctor actually went and, um, you know, like those birth predictions. Well, he was technically predicted to be born on my uh, on my birthday. So I actually uh, call, uh, not too often, but I think of my brother as being a little present of mine. And, uh, well, other than the fact that I see everybody around me to be, you know, my own property in some way. Um... It's kind of, oh, I never knew you could actually go and st uh, grab on that, but, um, uh, yeah, my brother got Ratchet and Clank, and that really fucked this game up for me, because that game is, one, cool, and two, you didn't actually need to go and use the analog stick, though it's best to go and use it, uh, you could just actually use the regular D-pad to play that game. Though, these were definitely the first two real PS2 games we actually played uh, earlier were uh, some ATV uh, off-road fury game, which didn't really play after uh, we got Ratchet and Clank. And um, the second game was Midnight Club. Midnight Club, I actually went and bought it a couple of months ago because, you know, I got it for like $3, but... Um, Playing it, that game really feels something like a tech demo. Because that, ga that game's... There are a lot of things wrong with that game. And I'm not saying anything about the difficulty. I'm just saying about how the game actually looks. I was, I was actually looking at some reviews on Amazon for some couple of games I might actually want to go and uh, check out. Some of which I didn't even look. I didn't even know about before and uh, some of them said like uh, this racing game you know it, it's pretty good it's going to be satisfying experience but it's not as good as like tons of other games like uh, Hot Pursuit 2 or Underground and Underground 2 or apparently he said Midnight Club 1 and 2 Midnight Club 1 is not all that great but uh, 2 is great it's just you know, balls to the fucking wall hard. One of the hardest games I've ever played in my life. But, and I've played Battletoads. I've actually beaten Battletoads, even though that took me a couple of hours. That stupid fucking chase level. Worst level in that entire game. Uh, that one in which you're being chased by that... Uh, whatever thing that's following you. It's you, You're being chased by the boss of that level. Oh well. Now to go back to uh, Samos, uh, Samos' hut. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. And ah, no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! Now, this game... If you actually go through it one way, uh, a specific way, you only really have to backtrack maybe once in the entire game. And I'm going to be showing you that uh, pathway through the entire uh, game. But uh, one of the nice things I really loved about this game is the fact that... Look over there. It's that Geyser Rock area. If we actually look... That way, we can actually see Misty Island. Not to mention some areas we're actually going to be going on Misty Island. Not to mention, we look over there, 
And we can actually see from this far away one of those um, one of those little tower like uh, glass things that are going to help us uh, send an eco beam into the village. Not to mention at the very top of the tower and the uh, or the very top of the uh, that uh, like building uh, temple structure in the forbidden jungle area. There's also there's a that spinny thing over there that we can actually see from the distance. And other areas we can see stuff that we can actually, um, from other levels, from far away. And it just makes the game look so awesome. Not to mention with the amount of, um, since, since we actually did that, there's very, very little loading unless you actually warp to some place. Hey, baby. What do you say you and I go cruising on this A-grab zoomer? Rule number one, I don't date animals. Ah, uh, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Listen, if you need something to keep you busy, my father always talked about an ancient precursor pipeline hidden deep underground. Some of these pipes end in vents from which eco flows freely, and some have been capped off so that the eco is sealed back. There must be a way to turn the capped vents on. I traced part of the pipeline back to the Forbidden Temple. Maybe you should look there for some type of switch. Okay, one point. I'm not going to be spoiling anything. But, um... There is no way that uh, Samos can actually... Uh, Kira is not Samos' uh, biological daughter. There, there's no way that can actually happen. If she is the same, if she's actually, uh, she's a little bit younger than Jack, but, um, she would, uh, to be Samos' biological daughter, she would actually have to be a bit younger. I'm just gonna leave it at that, but, um, I'm thinking that Samos had to have married, um, had to marry into a family, let's say. He didn't actually... He, he married into a pre-made family. And uh, here is just his stepdaughter. Hey! Little furry dude! Oh, I thought for a moment you were my muse. You're what? Haven't you ever seen a muse before? It's a little glowing squirrel about your size, full of spunk, and crazy as a lark. Oh, I get it. Like a sidekick. As a matter of fact, without my muse, I just can't sculpt. But with her around, I see beauty in everything, you know? Right now, I couldn't chisel my way out of a box. I think she ran away to that misty island. Huh. I just hope she's all right. It's worth a power cell if you bring her back to me. Wait a minute! We are not going back to Misty Island! Are we? Okay, one of the things I'm... Not gonna go into it too much, because I would actually have to go and, uh... Explain... Well, not maybe not explain, but I would actually have to go and, um spoil a little bit uh, later on for the discussion but um, Daxter one of the things I like to think about because I like analyzing uh, most of what uh, most of the actual games I actually play nowadays especially the ones I played before but um, I'm just going to go straight to the next level. I'm just going to go straight to the next level. I'll talk to these guys later. But, um... One of the things that I like analyzing is Daxter's character. It's not... You don't really... Even though uh, Jack's actually a good hero. A very, very good character. There's not really much you have to... You can really analyze compared to somebody like Daxter. Daxter is actually a bit more of a complex character in my opinion. I one of the things I like thinking is uh, is Daxter a real hero 
Is he doing heroic things? Or is he just doing this for Jack? I don't... I don't think he would actually be doing any of this shit if Jack wasn't here for him. Oh, trust me, in the actual games, he goes through a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff I damn well know he wouldn't do on his own. But because Jack's there, I really think that uh, Daxter does a lot of this stuff. Just because of that reason. He's there for his buddy. He might not be all that heroic, but he is uh, he is a good friend. One of the reasons why I like Daxter. Not to mention he's also absolutely hilarious, but... Uh, oh, well. No, 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 get back there. I'm trying to get both of these at the same time, and it pisses me off trying to do so. Yeah, that's right. Go, go that way. Ah. Go back, Yakow. I'm just going to put one in at a time. Oh, well. Now you go back. Ah, oh, stupid actual farmer. No, in there. Okay. Well, farmer's gonna give us another power cell. Ah, well done, my boy. You actually got those flea bags back into the pen. Now I can sleep in peace. Take this power cell for your trouble. Okay, let's see. Now we can go and... Actually, I should probably get that uh, scout fly in this uh, actual house, the farmer's house. Which I'm actually playing this game at 720p. I what before I was recording stuff in 1080, but I'm only really uploading at 720 anyway. So what's really the point if I'm not actually going to be going and uh, uploading at 1080? And uh, let's just say with the amount of videos I'm actually uploading and it's Especially with how long some of these videos can go. I would hate myself if I actually had to go into 1080p. I mean, there are definitely people I would rather have 1080p. But um, a lot of what I actually do, recording-wise and uploading-wise, is all dependent on not necessarily what, your, what you do when you watch uh, videos, but... More of what do I do when I watch Who videos? Awakens the Oracle. Wait, one of you has the light within. From before time, I have watched and waited for the true hero to return. Present to me 120 precursor orbs for each power cell I contain. This must be a precursor oracle like the sage Okay. And let's just say I never watch in 1080p because I have a pretty good internet connection. It's definitely not like the best one money can buy. But it's a good internet connection. It allows me to do quite a lot. I mean, if I can actually upload the way I do now, I should be able to actually go and... Um, You know, I, I should be able to say that I have a good internet connection. But even then, 1080p is uh, far, far away for me. Best I can do is 720. Now, well, here is the first stage you always want to go to. You can go to the... Um, uh, where was it? Uh, Sentinel Beach? Um, That might be it. But we're going to want to go there second because there's something we have to do in this area. So we can uh, go and do a couple of things in uh, the beach area. Oh well. Before I actually continue on this way, I actually want to go and um, get these... What were, what were they called? 
I'm gonna want to go and um, get those eco beam things up and running or start it so I can actually finish that uh, while I'm going through the actual level but this is actually a pretty easy level one of the things I actually like about this game is there's actually quite a lot of platforming granted it is a platformer and it is a collectathon but some platformer and collectathon games really don't have as much platforming as you would actually like to be honest, the Insomniac platformers don't have as much platforming as the average real platformer game would actually have. The Ratchet and Clank games are technically platformers, but they don't necessarily have all that uh, much platforming like the Jack and Daxter games would. Especially the first Jack and Daxter game. Or the Spyro series really doesn't have as much platforming as you would actually like. Just some things that I've uh, noticed. Though, though, to be honest, the entire Ratchet and Clank series being a platformer genre is something that I don't necessarily notice from the uh, third game onwards until A Crack in Time and, um, oh, what was it called? Until A Crack in Time and... Um, quest for booty. Then it starts going back into the entire platformer, uh, you know, genre again. The third game, Nodmers, just had way too much combat. Really didn't have all that much, like, difficult platforming in the actual game itself. Now, what I really, I'm trying to go here for is, anytime you have Blue Eco... You can actually go and, um, you, you go faster, uh, you can, I'm not gonna say, what was it? You can activate precursor technology and stuff, which is, uh, it generally hides, like, a ton of, uh, you know, power cells and precursor orbs and all that. I actually want to go down here and get this done. So we can go into the next one. There's only a couple of these, and that's that. Uh, we're, we're mostly going to... There, there might be two more of these. Uh, the route that I'm going through this level is going to pretty much... It is going to make me go through these ones. Except for the last one, which is going to be saved for the very end of the level, which I have to remember about. Okay, need to go and do this first before I continue on. And it should be right around here. Now, yeah, there's only two more left. However, um... But this game, um... One of, one of the things that, uh, I've, um... One of the things that I've actually wrote about uh, quite a bit is um, an el uh, something called an elementalist. Somebody that can use all different types of energies. Kind of like how you would use magic in, uh, or just manipulate uh, different things, stuff like that. However, a lot of people would probably guess that I got a lot of inspiration from, like, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Because that's kind of how it, it can seem in such a way in which you can go and pretty much manipulate most of everything around you. However, my biggest actual... My biggest actual, um inspiration was actually Jack from the Jackson Daxter series because the big thing about Jack is he can actually channel eco through his body this isn't a normal ability you can consider him special or weird for being able to do so it's not something that people can actually do regularly there are six different types of eco. 
there are the uh, green eco, which can be used for uh, health. Blue eco, red eco, yellow eco, dark eco, and finally light eco. And I'll go on into more detail later on on all those. What do you have in the basket? Nothing to talk about. Them monsters patrolling the ocean took a bite out of me fishing rig. But now they're gobbling up me catch. No matter what I try, I can't seem to catch a single fish in this river. Woo! Maybe it's your breath. You think you can do better? Try scooping up river fish with a tiny net. I'll give you a power set if you can catch 200 pounds of them critters. And now let you and Shrimp here use my speedboat to get to Misty Island. He's want to try the challenge. One of the big things about uh, one of the reasons why I definitely would say I have a lot of inspiration from the Jack and Daxter series for uh, my own writing was uh, the uh, one of the one of the big things about Jack is the fact that you can say that he re with all the different eco he actually gets he re he actually reinforce his body he'll reinforce his abilities with that eco like with a uh, red eco he gets stronger with um he can heal himself with green eco oh shit i wasn't paying attention um he can heal himself in later games with white eco or light eco he can get himself stronger with um dark eco as well go invincible shit like that he's able to bring up his speed with um blue quite a lot you can actually do not to mention you can just use it as regular energy such as uh yellow eco which you can actually go and do a energy blast And stuff like that. I, I really can't think at the moment I'm trying to do this without actually losing anything. Before I was actually good enough to never miss anything. You can miss up to a little bit, but you can't get one of those poison eels. If so, the entire catch is... Oh, shit. Missed one. The entire catch is... Uh, basically ruined which I have no idea why you can't just go and get rid of what's in the net after a little while so I'm guessing I'm gonna have to miss at least one because my perfect shit if I remember correctly, when I was actually doing this and with uh, Matt, I was a I actually got to like 199. I it was either I when I was trying to go back and beat the game again, or I, in the actual that playthrough, I actually got to uh, 199, and then I get one of those damn eels. Killed off all momentum. Oh well. This mini game really isn't all too difficult. It's just trying to talk and play is such a hard thing to do. Oh well. I really don't care to miss too much anymore. It's either you can miss up to 20 or you can miss up to 10. Any more than that, and uh, you're screwed. I'm just paying attention to the actual poison yields at this point. I I just don't want to fail again. Come on, make it. Now, technically, I own every single Jack and Daxter game to date. Uh, two of them weren't actually made by Naughty Dog. You did it! You caught 200 pounds of fish! Not bad for a couple of landlubbers. Here's the power cell I promised. 
And you can use my boat at the village dock whenever you like. Daxter, which actually comes in between uh, the first and second game, was actually, you know, a pretty good game. And it was on the PSP. Only on the PSP, too. And High Impact Games actually made one for the PSP, which actually comes after Jack X. Which I haven't played too much. Maybe like uh, 40 minutes of it. It's I, I've beaten Daxter before. I haven't beaten a second time. Though I've uh, attempted, I, I just kind of lost interest in it. But, um, for the most part, the PSP games are actually worth it. Though they're nowhere near as good as the original, you know, PS2 games or PS3. Considering I am playing the HD collection. Though, I don't believe Jack X actually got the HD treatment like uh, Ratchet Deadlocked got. Which is uh, a bit sad. I wouldn't have minded to play it. I actually bought the game, but I still have yet to actually go and play it. Ah, I really have to get back into the Jack and Daxter series. However, I've said this before, but uh, I have multiple reasons for going and uh, doing this entire LPing thing. Which, if you know me, I hate that. I hate that word. I hate that. I hate that phrase, LPing, Let's Plays, and all that. But um, one of the big reasons why I actually got into this was so that I could actually force myself to play all these different games I actually owned. Because I knew for a fact that I wouldn't actually uh, have the willpower to actually get through them. So I am actually going to finish off the Jack and Daxter series eventually. Just not now. I mean, uh, there are a couple of games I probably never would have played again unless I, you know, would have went back and uh, started playing some of these games for uh, the channel. I, I can actually say that uh, something like Burnout, the entire Burnout franchise, I've been playing quite a bit. But I never really would have been playing too much if I didn't actually do this... Uh, Recording stuff. Or the fact that I've actually... This will be my third time playing this game. At around... Four months. That would have never happened if I wasn't doing this uh, recording thing. And this was actually one of the biggest reasons why I actually wanted to go and uh, start recording. I just wanted to force myself to play these games again. Because they're good games, it's just... When you have so many games, when I have like 300 plus games, I kinda don't necessarily want to go and uh, play all of them. And some good ones that I want to play, I don't really want to actually go and touch. It's sort of a motivation thing sometimes, but... Uh, this has gone on for too long. See you, everybody.